Ben, we have talked about seven faulty standards that right. men operate by. But let's talk now about the true standard, the Word of God, because what God expects of us is to follow the New Testament Scripture. That is our standard. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that sometimes when you look into the Scripture, you're going to find that what you thought was right because of your emotions, you'll find out that it's wrong. And you might find that your family religion is contrary to what is found in the New Testament. And how many times have we heard of stories? I'm thinking about one story in particular where a person ultimately left Jesus, okay? Because they didn't like what the Bible says or teaches about homosexuality. So they read from the standard and said, no, no I, don't, I don't like that standard because I have my own. I think they were going by their, their, their feelings, emotions, conscience. And, and so you're exactly right. The New Testament has to be our guide. And whether we you know, like something that's being said or not, we still have to respect the standard. Mm -hmm. It goes back to Genesis 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God, He has all authority. He has all power. He has the right to say or to tell us what to do. And making sure that we understand where we find His authority for us today in the New Testament scriptures is going to become very important. But we can't just throw out what we see. You know, how silly would it be after you measured that and I said, oh, I don't really like that ruler. Um, and I'm still just going to stick to, to my answer. That's essentially what people are doing today with matters uh, that, that are significant. Yeah, what, and you mentioned the homosexual thing, Ben. Just to make one observation on that, whether it's homosexuality or some other issue, people often judge the Bible by their practice. I've already decided that the practice is right. Yeah. And so I'm going to judge the Bible as being wrong on this issue. What they need to do is to judge their practice by the Bible, not judge the, the Bible by their practice. People mm -hmm. have actually got it backward. Ben, let's take a look at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And I, I, I know that that verse is one that's been on your mind and on mine also when it comes to looking at a standard of authority. Ben? 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16 and 17, Paul said, All Scripture, and when he says Scripture, he's talking about divine writing, is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So, go ahead. And, well, that passage said all Scripture. And someone says, well, in the context of what Paul is writing about, he's writing about what Timothy had been taught by his mother and grandmother, Eunice and Lois, which was Old Testament. But the point is, the text says all Scripture. And so if the New Testament is Scripture, it's all given by inspiration of God. And in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 13, Paul said, Retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me. So he's saying my words are authoritative. The words of an apostle. Same context. Authoritative. That's, yeah. that's right. The scriptures present us with truth, mm -hmm. and they present it in such a way that we can know it and we can understand it. And the scriptures make it clear, Ben, that there's such a thing as right and wrong, and that we can know the difference. There are things with respect to moral issues that are right or wrong, and we can know the difference. With respect to purely religious worship issues, salvation issues, the scriptures present us with some things that are right and wrong and make it clear that we can know the difference between right and wrong. And so it's not left up to you to decide on your own what's right or wrong, but God has already declared what is right or wrong. That's right. And when we talk about God, yeah. God is an external authority. Mm -hmm. See, these faulty standards that we were talking about, so many of those are internal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let my conscience be my guide. I'm going to let my emotions or feelings be my guide. Well, those are strictly internal things. What we need is something outside of ourselves. I recall the words of Jeremiah in Jeremiah 10, 23, mm -hmm. when Jeremiah said, O oh Lord, the way of man is not in himself. Yeah. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps. Jeremiah says we need an external authority. God is that authority, and God expresses that authority in the written words of the New Testament. And it's amazing that we're able, obviously we're created by God, and it's amazing how we can all understand that, that, that there always has to be some type of standard. And, and people who reject the Lord, they still recognize that there, that there is some type of standard. And that's why, you know, to ignore 
what he's given us in his word, you know, is just going to cause chaos. And that's, that's what people want. People, people want to have some type of standard, something that is objective uh, in nature. And we can just look around in our society. Now, why are people so upset about what happened not too long ago with the, um, the, the horrific shooting in Oregon at the school? Because taking a life, there's a standard when it comes to that. Uh, and so just understanding this, and if we can understand that and apply it to what we have in the scriptures and to you know, our lives in general, then we're going to be better off for it. Absolutely. Well, Ben, I wanted to take a moment to look at Ephesians chapter 3, because I think this is a significant passage when it comes to talking about the New Testament scriptures as our authority. And let me read verses 1 through 5. I'm reading from the New King James Bible. It says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given me to me for you, how that by revelation he, that is God, made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. Paul here talks about the process of revelation, mm -hmm. how it works. Here is how God speaks to us. He's, he says that God made this known to me. And it's the mystery concerning Christ, he says. When I got it from God, he says, I wrote it down so that when you read it, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, he says in times past, this was not made known. In the other ages, it was not made known to the sons of men. That's you and me. We're the sons of men. It was not made known, but it has now been revealed by the Spirit to His holy apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. And so think about this. This is from God. He says it's the mystery concerning Christ, concerning the will of Christ and His life. And he says it was revealed by the Holy Spirit to the apostles and prophets. When mm -hmm. they got it, they wrote it down so that when you read, you can understand. You can know the will of God. Yeah. This is God's process called revelation. It's how he speaks to man, and he does not speak to man in some other way. Well, this is so important for people to understand. I think sometimes people can become frustrated, Max, with all of the different sources that are out there uh, and the false, the false standards of authority. The Pope says this. Uh, the pastor says this. The good right reverend is saying this. So which one am I supposed to believe? I'm just not going to believe any of it. Well, that's, that's not going to work come judgment day because Paul said that he wrote down Revelation that we can read it and that we can understand it. And so we can't give up and hopefully people will be encouraged if they are kind of struggling with this idea. Well, what, what, what am I supposed to believe? Jesus said that we can know the truth and this is going to be the standard by which we're, we're going to be judged. He's preserved these words for us for thousands of years so that we can still read it and understand it. And so that's gonna, there's a responsibility on our part to do that. And that's why this passage is so important for us. And you're exactly right, Max. We don't have to see Jesus, uh, you know, literally to understand that this is his standard uh, for us. First Peter, none of the saints I believe that Peter was writing to, he said, you guys haven't seen him, yet you loved him because you believed him or believed the things that we spoke about him. And, and so it goes back to the revelation of the apostles. Well. That's right. And you mentioned that we're going to be judged by these things. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said in John 12, 48. Jesus said, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be judged by our parents' religion. We're not going to be judged by the law of Moses. We're not going to be judged just by the words of your preacher. But Jesus said, The words that I have spoken will judge him. In James chapter 2 and verse 12, James said that we should conduct ourselves as though who, those who will be judged by the perfect law of liberty. We're going to be judged by God's word. Yeah. Uh, and there was one other passage I was thinking about in Romans. Romans chapter 2, the Apostle Paul said that men will be judged by the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which he preached. And that was in Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. So this is the standard by which we're going to be judged. This is a standard then that we need to live by. Absolutely. We're not going to be judged by something else. That's right. And 
I, I want us to look at another passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. You know what the verse says at the end of it. He said, the words that I am writing, they are the commandments of the Lord. Yeah. Someone says, I want to know the commandments of the Lord. Pick up your New Testament. <laughs> there you go. There's where the commandments of the Lord are found. So many people, I had someone ask me this question recently. I know you've done a sermon on it, and uh, if people are interested, they can go to DallinRoad.com. Uh, but I had somebody ask me a question about that from 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, was Paul just giving his own opinions and thoughts and ideas? And I said, well, listen, no. You need to group 1 Corinthians 7 or connect it also to what he said in chapter 14, 14 and 37. When he said this in this chapter, he wasn't talking about this one chapter, that these are this one chapter are his commands or the commandment of the Lord. He's talking about all the things that he was writing. These are the commandments of the Lord. And so the idea that Paul was just writing his own thoughts or think so's and opinions, no. He was inspired. That's 2 Timothy 3.16. Guided by God, guided by the Holy Spirit uh, with the things that he wrote and the things that he said. Both Old and New Testaments yep. inspired by God. Mm -hmm. Over in the book of 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, the very last verses of that chapter, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 20 and 21, the text talks about the Old Testament prophets. What was true of the Old Testament prophets is true of the New Testament also. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So these men, Old Testament and New, they were guided by the Holy Spirit. And we need to make this comment that sometimes <laughs> preachers will yeah. jump on people saying, well, you don't have any right to interpret the Scriptures yourself. Mm. And they will point to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. But 2 Peter 1, 20, it needs to be understood, this passage is not about your study or even interpretation of the Scripture. Yeah. It's not about what you're doing. It's about inspiration. It's about what the prophets had done in the Old yeah. Testament. He is saying that these prophets did not put their own interpretation on the events around them. And yeah. what they were doing was writing what came by the Holy Spirit. The prophecy never came by the will of man. Mm -hmm. It wasn't their own interpretation, but they were holy men of God who spoke as they were moved by the Spirit. It's fascinating, too, even in the first century, you mentioned 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture, and how at the time, you know, that was primarily being refer referencing the Old Testament Scripture. Uh, another passage I thought of was 1 Timothy 5, verse 17 and 18, where Paul, what he does, he, he quotes from two passages, both old and new, and calls them Scripture. For the Scripture says, You shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. He's quoting from Deuteronomy 25 and Luke chapter 10. And the reason why I just brought that up is because in the first century, the disciples, the apostles, they recognized authority. That those words being said in the first century by the apostles those words were authoritative as soon as they wrote them. Uh, and so they recognized this authority from the Old Testament, but now they had this new covenant or under the new covenant and the words of the apostles were just as authoritative. And, uh, and so just understanding that from an early beginning is powerful for us to understand that these are the words we need to be listening to. Well, Ben, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that is the New Testament writings themselves that they actually contain what Jesus and the Holy Spirit gave to the apostles. In John 16, 13, Ben, look at, look at that passage. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, authority, or on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. My translation says authority. Say authority. Yeah, for some yeah. reason, I just, yeah, that stood out to me. But the Holy Spirit, when He came, would not speak on His own authority. Mm -hmm. Whatever He would receive from God the Father yeah. and Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit would speak. And so the Holy Spirit is acting not by His own authority, but by that of the Father. Mm -hmm. And then John 14, 26 okay. uh, is a critical passage along the same line. So the context here, Jesus is talking to His apostles, and He said, but the Helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. There are two things I want us to see in John 14, 26. First of all, when the apostles recorded these things, 
or spoke these things, they did not have to rely on their memory. The Holy Spirit would bring those things to their remembrance. But secondly, the Holy Spirit would teach them all things. Now, the question is, do we have in our New Testament what Jesus and the Holy Spirit gave to the apostles? And to answer that, I'm going to the book of 1 John, the first epistle of John, beginning at verse 1 and down through verse number 4. Okay. John says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested. We have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which, w which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Mm -hmm. Looking at that text, John says, we've seen, we've heard, and now we're bearing witness to you. But in what medium did they bear witness? They're bearing witness by means of the scripture. Mm -hmm. Listen to what verse 3 says. That which we've seen and heard, we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we, we, write. we write to you that your joy may be full. And so the message that had come from the Holy Spirit, the message that had come from Jesus... These things were written down for us yeah. by the apostles so that we can know and have life through Jesus Christ. Right. And so we can take the Bible in our hand and particularly the New Testament and know that we have a complete and full revelation that we don't have to trust tradition. We don't have to trust conscience. We don't have to trust uh, even the law of Moses or what preachers say, but that we can trust the New Testament scriptures and John, in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, he told us why he wrote his book. And if you would yeah, read those two read verses, that? John, uh, from John chapter 20, 30 and 31, because they're really critical toward understanding the nature of the New Testament scriptures, Ben. Okay, John chapter 20, 30 and 31. The Bible says, Therefore many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Life in His name. The scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 said that God has furnished us with all that we need. Yeah. And here, this text says that He has furnished us with eternal life. That's the blessing of the scripture. Mm -hmm. And folks need to be mindful that this is not about me winning an argument over you or you over me or us proving someone wrong, but it's about pointing men and women to the scriptures so that they will know that they have what is right.